What's up folks at home? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about chatterbaits. It's chatterbait season. It's pre-spawn fishing. The ice is off. It's time to throw the chatterbait. Let's go underwater and check out how we're throwing them, where we're throwing them, and what we're using for trailers. We'll see you under there. Let's head underwater here. The first chatterbait that I'm always throwing is the Z-Man jackhammer. It just, it gets bit in every situation. Now, I really wanna think about trailer selection here. And the trailers that I'm gonna throw break down into three categories. One, active, two, subtle, and three, panfish. So here is your active trailer. This is a rage tail grub, and it literally is what I'm gonna throw nine out of 10 in kind of a mixed water clarity. It's got a great action, it's got a great tail kick, and it's going to catch a lot of fish. So it's my active one. On the flip side, we have the Berkeley Powerbait Power Stinger here, which was made to be a chatterbait trailer. And this is what I'm gonna throw when those fish are targeting bait fish specifically. Now, the jackhammer shines here coming through underwater vegetation, as you just saw. It's second to none and coming through and cleaning itself off. It's gonna make the most out of your cast and literally comes through everything really, really, really cleanly. Here you can see it shakes it off, comes through and makes the most out of that cast. A lot of other chatterbaits aren't going to do that but the power stinger here is what i'm going to throw in clearer water or if the bass are targeting a lot of bay fish like say we got you know bass that are really got some gizzard shad pinned up i'm throwing that power stinger as a trailer not necessarily the grub right the grub is more of a catch-all if i don't really know what they're eating but the power stinger here looks really good in tennessee shad with this b height delight color in every water clarity it's got that nice translucence to it too looks really good as a bait fish profile right once again, I'm throwing this jackhammer up in the trash and bringing it out and it cleans itself off and goes through really good. Now, if the fish are eating bluegill, I'm gonna throw the missile baits D-bomb on the back and you can see it's all about profile here. We've got those nice twin legs kicking in the back, but if you look at the overall body shape of the D-bomb on the chatterbait, it looks way more robust. It looks way more like a bluegill than a bait fish. And that's what we want, right? Bass are gonna eat things that look like what they're normally eating. This right here looks far more like a bluegill than anything else. It's got that ribbed body too that gives it kind of an advantage in what it's doing and what you need it to do. And here's a perfect example of that jackhammer cleaning itself off. Some of this slime and crud is the hardest stuff to fish, but there in the couple cranks of the reel handle, you see it cleans itself off. It's back to running true and clean. You can pick fish off out of this kind of cover with this bait because it's going to do that. That's the advantage of the jackhammer, right? It just does what it's made to do and it's worth the price of admission. Now, you gotta think about what you're targeting and how you're targeting, but the jackhammer is the first bait that I'm really truly gonna pick up because of all of these qualities, right? It's got a great action, it's got a great sound and knock, it's got a great displacement profile in the water and you can throw a lot of different baits on it and it's going to do great. If the water is clear and the fish have seen a lot of chatterbaits, I'm going to go down to the mini max. You can see here it doesn't displace as much water, but what it does do is it has a higher pitch whine and it tracks really, really, really well in different areas with different trailers. Now, I'm going to focus on throwing bait fish trailers at first with this. So here's the Zoom original fluke. I really like it cut down as a trailer for the Mini Max. You can see that active tail action it's got right there kicking through the water. It looks really good. It's got a lot of clear transparent colors, which I find work better on the Mini Max. It does a better job of mimicking bait fish in the water, if you will. And it doesn't have quite as much displacement, so it's good in pressured water. This is also a pond killer, right? The Mini Max will destroy in ponds as well as in lakes, but I really, really like it with that active kick here now you've got a rage crawl of a cut down rage crawl and you can see here if i'm in a pond with a lot of bluegill this is what i'm going to throw if i'm in warming water 
this is what I'm going to throw because it's got that nice kick. It's almost like a swim jig kick, but it's got that extra blade and flash on it. The Mini Max does an awesome job pairing well with smaller or undersized lures, and that's really a benefit to you when you're fishing pressured water, right? The Rage Tail, once again, speaks for itself. It does a really good job giving that bro that that bluegill crawfish type profile. And the Mini Max, um, I really enjoy because it's a different pitch in the water, right? And that crawfish profile on there gives it that bluegill-esque profile, that bluegill-esque kick in the water. And it does a really good job when fish are actively feeding, picking up those bites. Plus, it comes through all the junk being a Z-Man chatterbait. It, it cuts through that stuff really well. A lot of other chatterbaits don't, and we're going to show you those underwater in a second. But it does a really good job. Now, here we've got the rattle worm, and this is when fish are requiring a subtle bite. You see that subtle tail kick on there? It also has a integrated rattle in the bait there. You can see it, and what that's going to do is it gives it a secondary knock, and sometimes that secondary knock and action on a chatterbait is going to trigger bites, right? I'm really, really, really excited to see how this bait is going to perform. It looks really good with that subtle tail kick in action. It's got that extra one. Now, on the flip side, when you've got really dirty water, you want to go to the Big Blade Chatterbait. And this bait is its namesake. Literally, this Big Blade kicks and knocks and creates all kinds of havoc. You can feel this bait vibrating all the way up into your armpit, right, when you're throwing it. You want to throw the Big Blade when you're targeting big fish or you're in off-colored or dirty water. It's going to be a huge profile. Now, I've paired it with a Zoom Super Fluke. That's the size of this bait. That's a total Zoom Super Fluke, unmessed with, uncut, unmodified, and it pairs up really, really well. Now, you can see this thing knocks like no tomorrow, right? And it's going to be different for the fish. It's going to draw a bigger bite, and bigger baits usually have more drawing power. I like a subtle trailer on it in clear water because it's already knocking really hard, but this is my actually, you know, dream trailer right here. This is a full-size Havoc Pit Boss, and this thing looks great underwater. You can see those kicking claws on the Havoc are undulating perfectly in there. That big blade's really knocking and draw it in. It provides a ton of action, and it comes through everything. If bass are eating bluegill on the beds, this is the bait that I'm going to pick up and throw. It's just loud, it's obnoxious, but also in this off-colored water here, it's going to kick and really, really stand out. We like that day glow orange on it. It looks really good in dark water. I'm really excited to throw this on lakes with big fish. And just like the jackhammer, just like the mini max, it comes through cover and keeps going. That cannot be said enough. When you want to make every cast count, and you're coming through a lot of junk and grime in the water like this shot right here, that big blade is going to come through and make the most out of every cast, right? We're throwing it through pad fields and slop here, and it does a great job of coming back and staying clean throughout the cast. As you see, it hit that green underwater you know, algae and come through clean. That's a huge advantage when you're fishing because a lot of baits aren't going to do that, right? Now, here's your last one that really comes in this line, and it's, once again, different. It is the Z-Man Project Z Chatterbait, and it doesn't have quite as big of a knock. It also doesn't have quite as big of a profile in the water. Now, I really like this in clear water or deep when fish have seen a lot of other chatterbaits. This Project Z Chatterbait has a very subtle kick to it, and it's paired with a Brickley Havoc Grass Pig. And the Grass Pig, once again, is an underrated chatterbait trailer. I rig it upside down because you see the water displacement on the top of this bait. It's going to hamper the action of a normal swim bait rigged, but the Havoc Grass Pig rigged upside down is a killer on this bait. It matches up perfectly with this color. When I'm fishing deep grass lines or I'm fishing fish that have been pressured, the Project Z is going to get the call. It's very subtle. It's got a subtle knock to it. It's got a nice kick, but it still does what it wants. Here it is paired with a Rattle Worm again, and you can see that t subtle tail kick, that quiet action with that secondary rattle in it looks really, really, really good. And a lot of times when you're fishing for fish that have seen a jackhammer, that have seen a big blade, this Project Z is going to come through there. It's subtler or in clear water where most guys would normally throw, you know, a regular jig or um, a minnow, you know. This bait, you can still throw the chatterbait, you can still get that knock, but the subtlety of it 
along with a rattle worm tail, that secondary kick, that secondary action, really can generate a lot of bites for you. And it comes through clean. That's the biggest thing, throwing a chatterbait around grass. You want a bait that comes through clean. Any bait with a direct connection to that blade is going to come through far cleaner than one with a split ring or something else on it. And it's really going to be an advantage because it's going to make the most out of every cast. And that's super duper important when you're fishing cover, grass, underwater slop. Now, here's the Guggen baits clickbait. And I wanted to show you a bait that did not have a direct connection to the head. This bait and blade is removed by a wire and balls. And it looks great here in open water. This bait actually is a pretty decent open water chatterbait. But where this bait does not excel is around cover because it doesn't have a direct connection. It looks really good in open water, but as soon as we get into cover here, you're going to see the problem that it has. And every chatterbait that doesn't have a direct connection to the head is going to have the same problem that, that I found. When it hits junk in the water, it collects it. And it doesn't shed it like a jackhammer would. It doesn't shed it like a mini max would. It holds onto it and kind of ruins that cast. And you don't know. Like you're fishing a bait where the bass are, you need to know what it's hitting and when it's taking care of it. And that comes from that direct connection. So always, 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 in my opinion, fish a bait with a direct connection to the line tie. It's going to be an advantage. We learned a lot about chatterbaits. Chatterbaits are great reaction baits. They do really, really well around submerged vegetation. Um, they're just a bait that generates a lot of bites. You see the big blade here. I'm really excited about fishing this bait this year. There's a lot of different things to consider when you're fishing a chatterbait, what kind of fish you're targeting, what kind of trailers you want to use. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Give us a like, give us a subscribe, help support the channel, and we'll see you out there next time, guys.